All right, everybody, I'm going to hang out by myself for a few minutes. Everybody was super um, fast with those partner tracks. Some people usually go over, but everybody went under. So we have six minutes of free time. I'll wait for Barrett and Kelly, and then we'll get this thing started. Alex, I was trying to stay on the agenda. <laughs> yeah, Bora. I try to make sure everybody is very specific with their tracks and the time. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's good if somebody is faster, but um, if everybody is faster, then uh, time doesn't really equate. But uh, those were good. Those were succinct. Um, it worked out pretty well. So I hope everybody liked those. We're going to have three more. We've got a co-selling course uh, being published to our community from some uh, from uh, reveal and then we'll have 11 site and um, we have a presentation from netline as well. So we have account based marketing. Uh, we've got our sales and customer success. Um, this video uh, essentially like a, your, your open video chat link that we're experimenting with in our open office hours from 11 site. That's super cool. And Bora has gotten off. Uh, um, offer for you guys as well. Uh, Netline killer ABM platform that just got bought by a larger data provider, an intent data provider. So you have all the intent data you need to power your ABM campaigns. And then uh, reveal, of course, the account mapping and near bound solution. So I spoke with Jared and recorded with Jared yesterday or maybe the day before, but uh, we have a full course on how agencies can actually co-sell with partners and use this nearbound strategy that you may have heard about, you may know about. If you're in the HubSpot ecosystem, I'm sure you've gotten links um, and some more information about that. So I'm gonna bring Kelly up on stage and then we'll wait for Barrett to get done with his meeting right now to join us as well. Thanks for joining a little bit early, Kelly. I'm gonna post pleasure. to this as well. And I uh, just got one more thing to mention before uh, we start. So that community is only for agencies. If you try to join your tech company or partner manager at a tech company or something, unfortunately, we can't let you in. But that community is going to house all of the recordings, all of the resources, all of the offers. And I do a good job of putting the information in the email body as well. So you don't have to click through and join the community. But for anyone in our community, any agencies, the HubSpot Partner Tracks course is in there. You can watch last year's sessions for a few more days, but then we're going to delete those and replace them with this year's 2024 Partner Tracks. Uh, if you're a TikTok uh, uh, service provider, if you're a Shopify service provider, if you're a um, modern data stack service provider, there's also courses for those you can check out in the community. Uh, Kelly, what's going on? Nothing much. Just uh, staying busy. How about you? Oh, yeah. yeah. I like your hat, though. I, I feel like I'm a little <laughs> bit on a train ride. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't, don't get the reference with the hat. They just think it's a funny looking hat. But um, <laughs> yeah, it is a conductor hat. It is a little small for me. But um, that's that's that. So I'm glad you got the reference, Kelly. That's nice. <laughs> I'm picking up what you laying down, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, so with this one, uh, what we try to do with all these, if you didn't come to last year's or any of the other tracks, we want to introduce you to partners. We want to give you the lay of the land, what's going on in the partner ecosystem of uh, the day, which is HubSpot. Uh, but then we want to give you the uh, training, at least uh, show you what to do when you have partners and you need to get revenue from those partners. You need to get uh, money, right? We all need money at some point. That's what that's, makes businesses run. <laughs> yeah, we have to, 
We have to make money off of Can't this. Can't run on friendships. <laughs> I wish, yeah. Partnerships I wish don't, don't make CROs happy until they, uh, until they start bringing in the cash. So uh, two individuals that have worked on both sides of partnerships. Uh, Kelly, you're more on the app partner ecosystem side, but obviously one of the things you do with all of these app partners is help them understand like what do what what agencies play a role and where are they and how do you kind of get them involved and um barrett was on the agency side at hubspot enablement and uh, activation of agencies in the program but now he's jumped ship and uh he's heading up revenue i believe i don't know what his title is specifically but i think it's either head of revenue or uh, CRO at Newbury. Do you know? Um, I think it could be director of revenue, yeah. director of sales. Yeah, he's doing he's doing that, which is killer. We love <laughs> we love it when I love it when that happens. I love it when uh, a tech partner manager, someone on a tech partner program, joins an agency. Uh, it's, it's well, really and Pete Raymond, who was going to join us, but um, had a last minute call. Like, he used to be on the app partner side as well at, on the program team, and then he went over to New Breed uh, to run partnerships for them. So, you definitely see a lot of back and forth. It's all one ecosystem, right? Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to post his link. Yeah. I mean, there's it, what we typically see is tech uh, partner manager jumping over to tech uh, A, jumping back to tech B, and kind of going in between those. Um, but coming over to the agency side, if you know, if you've never worked on the agency side as a tech partner manager, it's definitely enlightening. It's, um, it's, it's, it's a great experience. Um, if you've never done that. So, um, just working with the partners is good, but actually having to figure out partnerships from the agency world is interesting. Um, I like it. It looks like Katie uh, Lambert from HubSpot clarified <laughs> that Barrett is a senior director of revenue, which thank you, Katie, because don't want to undersell his title. Senior director of revenue at New Breed. That's Barrett's title. Now we got that straight. I posted his LinkedIn. I'll post yours as well, Kelly. Um, so we'll wait for Barrett to get in and I'll, I'll start fielding some questions uh, for Kelly. So but let's, let's talk about this real quick, Kelly. Um, what is going on? What's the state of the union right now for your role at HubSpot? Just so we can kind of get the, you know. Yeah, I'm really focused on um, helping our app partners to connect with our sales team and our CS team. Also working um, with Katie and some others at HubSpot and how we're connecting app partners with solutions partners. I have another whole part of my job that's kind of a two partner motion, which is focused on like, creating a lot of content for partners. But um, I think the first part is probably more relevant to our conversations today. I love it. Yeah, this is good. I mean, I like to get both sides. Hey, Barrett, welcome. I'll give you a chance to do a quick introduction. We were going back and forth trying to figure out what your title was, but I, I got your LinkedIn there. It's um, a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> I undersold lot. your title, Barrett. I just thought you were a director. I didn't know you were Kelly. a senior director. So that's on Kelly, me. you got to have a senior in there. Come on. Is that because of the age thing? How are you getting it is. <laughs> it's because I'm old. Yeah. So senior old. old guy, director. Of revenue. We should actually, I'll change it on LinkedIn. Old dude. Director of revenue. Feels I'm appropriate. A senior founder of partner hub. Now I just uh, gave myself a promotion. Um, Barrett, do a quick introduction. We got a light introduction to Kelly. We may need one more from you, Kelly, if I'm honest, but uh, Barrett, give, give us your introduction real quick. Uh, I am senior director of revenue at New Breed, one of HubSpot's top solutions partners. I was former HubSpot for eight and a half years. I know Kelly quite well, best of friends. Obviously, you as well, Alex. And um, about six months ago, I made the switch over to the solutions partner side. New Breed's been fortunate to help uh, hundreds uh, of customers grow. And it's a really cool opportunity for me to join a team that's figuring out how to solve problems. I'm loving it. Here's my TLDR. And uh, I think what helps, at least um, from the partnerships angle, um, what services are you guys most known for supporting right now? Yeah, so the way that we go to market is pretty unique. We are outcome-based. What we focus on is helping our customers get to some sort of a destination. So a lot of solutions partners are fairly tactical, and we were for many years, and I can appreciate that work. We 
deliver value across the spectrum. So we'll do top of the funnel in terms of helping you build your web presence and create assets and do your social media and help from just an awareness perspective. We do a, a lot of that work. Demand gen, certainly as we move down the process, but really a, a technology focused solutions partner in terms of operations. We do a lot of rev ops and marketing ops, a lot of CRM implementation and migration. Spend a lot of our time working in the tech stack of our customers. And so we tend to index pretty uh, directly into the way that, you know, if you will, customers actually go to market and how they actually grow. Yeah, I mean, it's an uh, agency I think most of us know about, uh, especially, you know, Kelly and the HubSpot team know very well. You guys are one of the top agencies in the program pretty much every year. Um, and uh, Galen Dow, I think, is in the chat. He was in here cool. earlier. He's, he was one of the guys, uh, one of the early founders, right? Co-founder, something like that. Many Galen, moons ago, yeah. Doing? Galen, I haven't talked to you in a while. Good to see you, I guess, or you see me. There he is, yeah. There he is, hey, Galen. <laughs> and he's, he's got a new product he's probably going to promote yeah. there for free. You might as well. Drop in the chat. Right yeah, there now. you go, drop it in. <laughs> um, so uh, let's, let's do this. Um, uh, Kelly, real quick, so what is your purview on helping agencies and tech meet and align and, and anything there right now, just so we're all on the same page. What, what do you do between agencies and tech now? Yeah, I think we're at HubSpot. It's like early days for that emotion officially. And we're really investing it in 2024, which I think is super exciting. Some of the things I've worked on to this point is um, we definitely put on, some webinars where solutions partners and app partners are paired up together, right? And then they can kind of present their joint solution to a public audience, which I think is a great way for people to connect and work together closely and, um, and really showcase their joint value expertise. So that's one thing we've worked on. Um, we've definitely, we had an, uh, an event in December where we got some app partners and solutions partners together to try to do kind of a, like a group learning and had some playbooks out of that. Um, and then the other thing I will say too is from the app partner side, right? Like we work very closely with our tap, top app partners. And so we have a lot of visibility into who they're working with um, for solutions partners. And they are definitely coming to us and kind of sharing their experiences and asking for advice, what works in the ecosystem and, and that kind of note. So we do have um, really a glimpse into those upmarket app partners and how many of these deals are kind of like worked collaboratively in, in a three-way fashion or four-way, right? Yeah. And it's, it's super important. I think um, obviously partnerships is a two-way street. Everybody has to bring something to the table. If one person is lackadaisical uh, or one side of the partnership is lackadaisical and just kind of riding it, you know, it doesn't really, um, create the success that it could. So uh, Barrett, you've been on uh, both sides or, uh, you know, are, are working on both sides now, are working on the other side. What is some of the things that's changed with go-to-market from the agency side? What are some of the things that you guys are implementing? Some of the things that you guys are doing, some of the things that are top of mind right now with your current partners relaunching anything there or um, new partnerships in general? I think, if you look at the landscape of how technology is starting to impact specifically our own go-to-market, the customer wants more, not just technical ability, but technical depth. So when I think about like what the average customer needs and the way that we go to market with a HubSpot lens, I think in many ways, those customers are not just looking for an all-in-one. And I got to give HubSpot credit. Like they have a phenomenal platform that for a lot of their SMB customers is all-in-one. But as HubSpot's tried to scale up market and move into a larger customer base, you've seen partners like us look to evolve the way that we solve technical problems, how we integrate solutions, how we think differently about technology, because it's a little bit more point solution sometimes than it has been in years past. So I think from a go-to-market perspective, the commoditization of the way that partners historically were very tactical oriented, we do this thing, we do it really well, has also had to evolve because of the way the technology has come into the go-to-market framework of how most organizations, whether you're B2B tech or you're manufacturing or you're, you're healthcare or whatever it is in terms of ICP, how those companies actually go and do their work, frankly, right? So we're more technical, we're more enabled. And, you know, we are, we talk about growth enabled, right? We talk about helping companies to unlock meaningful growth. It's one of our core ethos of how we actually you know, help customers. 
it requires us to be go-to-market experts. I think, again, if you look at the history and the way that the market in terms of solutions providers and partners across any ecosystem have evolved in the last couple of years, it is a more integrated approach. We're not just thinking about one component of your customer lifecycle, but actually the end-to-end -end journey and being more intentional in terms of mapping how our solution and our services tied together with really interesting technology can actually make you more effective, can deliver better ROI, help you you know, in more ways than one, I think, enable your customer to get your value sort of door to door. So ultimately long-winded speech, but I, I do think technology is accelerating the way that we deliver value at, at scale, certainly, and empowering and changing the way that we, in many ways, actually help customers versus just doing, you know, work, if you will, at a surface level. Oh, I love it. Great answer. And I, I should have probably kind of defined go to market. Um, everybody, I think, has a different sort of interpretation. But the way I define it is bringing a new product to a new audience. So the product could have been around forever. You could have had a partnership forever. But what if you as an agency want to go into Latin America or APAC? Or what if you want to go upstream or downstream? Or what if you want to launch a new service? Um, you should rely, you should be able to rely on your partners to help you with that strategy, with that execution. And um, Kelly, you're working with the app partners to kind of try to help them understand what they should be doing, what the other successful app partners are doing to enable these agencies, to enable this uh, success. Uh, but what are some of the ways that the best tech partners out there that you're working with are uh, bringing agencies closer to their users in general? Yeah, I think it starts with really understanding what the agency's motivations are, right? Like the agency business model is different than the SaaS business model. So I think that's kind of the basic framework you see with top um, app partners who have agency partner programs of their own. It's kind of built on that fundamental premise of understanding where agencies are coming from, what is, what is their this kind of maturity model around the services that they offer and where that app can plug in. And then I think once you have that dialed down, right, it's kind of about um, good enablement, making sure that the agency has complete access to the tool, demo account, is able to get someone on the phone when they need to, right, being reliable, making sure um, in particular that it's not just focused on like, give me leads, but rather are our joint customers continuing to be happy? Are we continuing to kind of upsell and get the most out of this tool? And so I think responsiveness, um, continued touch points, right? Like, I don't think you can just sit it and leave it if you really want to continue to have the relationship be fruitful. So kind of structuring your program that so you're able to really strategically identify which of the agencies are the best fit for you and which ones you can invest more more time in. Yeah, again, it's a two way street. I mean, you both have to invest time and energy. You're both expelling resources uh, and Barrett, um, you're, you know, leading revenue operations there now. So you're looking at each new partnership and each new go to market from a, a cost standpoint, from an ROI standpoint. So I want to dive into that a little bit and feel free to bring real examples. We all love real examples, but um, partners on the new breed side, how do they fit into Again, those examples of go-to-market, new sector, new service, yep. up or downstream. Let's talk towards that a little bit. I think for us, most of it is driven by customer demand. So it's easy to say, and I, you know, you can give HubSpot credit for this too in some ways, but that it's about selling a software, it's about doing something different. But to Kelly's point, like it really is about better together. And so for us, what drives a lot of our partnerships, I would say almost exclusively, is the idea that when our customers are showing a need, we should be intentional around finding a solution for that. In many ways, it's proximity based. So there's things like, so for example, we do a lot of ABM for our customers, right? And so there's, um, you know, Rollworks and Sixth Sense, and there's really great platforms out in the market that we engage with in a way that helps our customers to get more value from the HubSpot solution combined with our services and the efforts they're trying to achieve, obviously ABM in this example. And so I think if I were to keep it really simple, I would say that the argument for partnership should always be about better customer value. And for us, that's the core of what we focus on, in particular with technology. So you could think about it in terms of, you know, we all love saying AI, right? If we don't say AI at least once on this call, then we're not doing our job. We're just, <laughs> this, we gotta like, and then we gotta say like AI, it's cool, we're friends, don't destroy my computer or whatever. But let's be frank, right? Like when you think about that trend in the market, there's 47 different platforms a week coming out saying we have AI and we do something really cool. But there's platforms like Jasper and others that have taken a step further and said, 
like Al Badrecki's over there, right? He's a good example of thinking differently around how do we use AI in their case to empower agencies to go to market more effectively for their customers. So while we haven't adopted this, I have heard from my peers, there are folks that are saying, well, I could take AI based content and empower my services team to go to market differently. Maybe they're more effective or otherwise. I could perhaps reduce my service cost on certain elements because AI allows me to do that more effectively. So at its core, and to sort of land the plane on my, my rant here, I do think partnerships in particular for um, you know, our dynamic are integral to the way that we help the customer. And so we really do make it about that first. I was on mute there. Sorry about that. Yeah, I was just going to give a couple shout outs. Uh, Netline is a sponsor of this killer ABM platform, and they have a partner track that'll be in the subsequent course. And Jasper.ai has a service track in our TikTok partner tracks course, which is in our community, if you're interested in that. But you're right. It's like, okay, well, on the tech side, and I'll get Kelly uh, to clarify this a little bit more. But on the tech side, it's up to them to make sure they paint that clear picture of what can we help facilitate then get this shared customer together that first one um maybe the hard one but maybe you already have it and you can use account mapping to figure that out uh then it's prepping this go to market and one side has to do a and the other side has to do b and the results are obviously that you know one plus one equals three quote from all the partnership leaders out there uh, but that's it that's really what we're all after so i want to get into a little bit of you know some examples but what is back on the tech partner. So if I'm an agency and Typeform or Sendoso or one of these guys comes to me and they're like, we want to partner with you. What would you tell the tech partner team is back on them and maybe even empower the agency a little bit to say, no, that's, that's something the tech partner should give you or have or, or help you with. And it's not on you. It's really on them. Any examples come to mind, Kelly? One of my absolute, or, I'm sorry, I'm diving in over you, Kelly. You go. <laughs> I don't know. Go ahead. I got all jazzed up. It's you said Kelly as I was just ranting. Sorry. I, I'll be quick. I I think the thing that I'm gonna get on a soapbox. So for everybody, sorry, I'm gonna get up high on my soapbox. Right. The thing that I that for me is the catalyst to success in true initial partnership dynamic is bringing value. Like what agitates me is when because obviously in my role, like my senior old man role, as we joked about earlier, I get outreach from folks that say I want to partner with you, and I'm like, great in what way and they're like we want you to sell stuff and i'm like cool but why and they're like just sell some things and we'll give you money and i'm like right but you and 50 other people have said that to me this week tell me why my customer needs you and then give me the go to market in a box give me the the model in a box and kelly we've actually talked about this before just one-on-one -on -one, but like i am alex i firmly believe if you're any kind of a solution right now and you're trying to build an ecosystem a partner mechanism this go to market we're talking about you have to show up having figured out something. You can take your early adopters, like I don't wanna disgrace that at all and work with them to do it. But if you come to me in this example, I would love it if you said, we talked to four of your customers, here's what they're using the platform for. We believe these are the three services you could start off with and charge for. Would you like to sign a partnership with us? It's gonna cost you nothing for three months. We're gonna help you implement your first three customers. We wanna make you successful. Like that idea of like time to value, super interesting. Kelly, uh, I love it, Barrett. That was that was a great answer. And yeah, get on a soapbox if you have something soapbox worthy. <laughs> Sorry, <of>. Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly, the question back to you uh, was, uh, what is on the tech partner, and what do you tell the tech partners that they need to have in place and be able to use to enable these agency partners? What's on them? Yeah, I think I would also plus one what Barrett is saying. I think it's a common mistake, right? That a tech company is in love with their own product. They think it's the best thing ever. And they think it's enough just to say, hey, we'll give you 10% of the first year contract value. And that's somehow that, that the agency is going to be like, all right, sign up. But it, that's really not what the agency is focused on, right? So I think that that is, is good to call that out. That that's, that's not enough to bring to the table. You have to bring much more than that. And I think um, Barrett's shout out of, about finding success stories, because I think agencies want to see some proven track record, right? And whether you can ask them to share and reveal, and that can help you dig into it, or you just talk to your own customers and find out, like you should know which agencies they are using, right? And having those success stories in hand um, is going to go a, a long way to showing the value. And then I think when you approach, you just have to have um, a kind of clear position on what 
is in it for the agency. And I think you need to do your due diligence. Like not all agency is the same, right? As Barrett was describing their philosophy, they're taking a different approach than other agencies in the ecosystem, right? Do some research, understand like what, what they're focused on, because some people might be focused on expanding in new markets, right? So maybe somebody's trying to go from down market to up market and you're an up market app. And you can kind of come come to it with a plan as how you can facilitate that expansion. Um, or you're a manufacturing app, right? And they want to start doing vertical specific services. You can pitch that too. But it starts with having some like due diligence on who you're talking to and, and what they want. And then I think it's typically on the app partner to make that to make that case. Yeah, I, I agree fully. I think the app partner needs to do um, a lot of the heavy lifting around really what is the track knowing and being honest and um, being empathetic, I think is a good word to use now about how much effort is on the agency and resources. They have to bring in team members. They've got to put their own neck on the line, whoever you approached at first to tell their team, this is something that I think we should look into. But every time you get on a call, that's, that's money that the CEO or the the founders of the agency have to spend to learn your tool, to prep that go to market, to figure out the use cases, to find those shared customers, to get on the sales calls, all that stuff. So making sure that you understand that and then giving them the track to success uh, with the go to market. So, okay, I'm, I'm going to ask you to do training. I'm going to ask you to log into this demo account. I'm going to ask you to spend your time on lunch and learns, but I'm going to make sure to give that uh, free account. I'm going to make sure to involve you in some co-marketing, bring you on onto a panel and do a webinar, get you some thought leadership, maybe do an article together to get you a backlink, to get that reciprocity engine continued, not only because it's fair, but also because I want you to get to the end of the go to market. That means we are in market together. We have shared customers. We're creating those uh, those case studies, and we're going to be able to rinse and repeat that with new markets together. So Barrett, um, a lot of this has to do with winning bigger deals. And uh, a lot of agencies are trying to get maybe not just bigger um, deals with their clients, but longer lasting partnerships with their clients, longer lasting relationships. And that means we got to kind of surround them at the sale. And then we have to continue that sort of nurturing hug of partnerships throughout. Um, let's talk about that a little bit. How the question back to you is uh, help us understand your recommended strategy for if and when and how to bring partners into deals, especially bigger deals. And uh, how do you ensure partners bring consistent value while you're in that go to market process? Kind of a loaded question, but unpack that for us if you can. You can load it up. I'm cool with that. Remember, I'm the senior <laughs> old guy here, so I'm good with it. Um, I think you have to kick off with knowing their worth. And I mean that very specifically. I use the term worth not because of anything other than expertise. So less about general ability. I think in many ecosystems, you get a lot of generalists, but you need the specialist for the larger deal that in some way frames into a criteria that you set. So as the technology provider in this, we can pick on HubSpot and the HubSpot instance here, obviously, like what they need to do really well is define the criteria of what it means to co-sell, how to do so successfully up market and mechanize a lot of those motions. If you go out to the market and you look at sophisticated ecosystems, they have really done a great job defining success for criteria around how to categorize partner ability and then depth. So not just can you do it, but to what level can you do? So like knowledge, ability and expertise and maybe even mastery below that if we go to like the fourth level if you get that right then it should be pretty straightforward and easy in terms of bringing the different and most specifically correct partners as you go into a larger transaction but the other part of that component is beyond skill it's in some ways i think uh, specialty right so you look at it in terms of like vertical and deep-seated knowledge around a specific industry in order to make this really impactful for your customer, your go to market needs to be the same. I don't disagree with your comment. Like when we go to market together, that's valuable. I would look at it in terms of how do I frame into partner expertise plus technology power plus vertical deep integration and like sort of overall time and seat. Those three components together, which again, you can measure, 
creates a really strong collective. And that's how you do it consistently. Otherwise you can't scale this thing. If you have partners just showing up randomly here and there, you're gonna increase your churn. If you have a thousand versions of that statement happening, then you don't have the repeatable process. But if you measure and you qualify and you certify a partner, and then you create these opportunities to then consistently reinforce those guardrails, then it helps you collectively as you actually go to market to be consistently effective. Oh, great answer. Great answer. Uh, lots in there, Kelly. Um, I want to get your thoughts on Barrett's response to the question of bringing partners into bigger deals and making sure there's reciprocity throughout. Yeah, I agree with, I agree with what Barrett said. I think um, clarity, expectations set um, between both parties and repeatability, all, all really important to success, right? Because in these larger deals in particular, um, it's going to be a big loss if, if there's a flop. And if you can't repeat it, it's not worth the investment, right? I think that in these more complex systems, it's costly for the agency to be able to speak to them and certainly to add any services on top of them and even just take a sense of ownership of recommending them. So in order to justify that investment, I think you need to align with the tech partner on very clear criteria of, of how these things are going to play and what your expectations are on both sides. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Making sure that not only is there alignment, but very clear, we call, um, we have a strategy for creating a partner memorandum, but it's essentially just, what are you going to do? What am I going to do? What are the expectations? What are the goals? Who's my point of contact? Like lay out all that stuff. Like you're, if you is a real partnership, you know, if you're just going to be an affiliate and just put a link on, your site. And then if someone clicks through and joins that small app, um, you get a commission. That's a different story. But if you're really going to partner, it is a business to business relationship, like a joint venture. And that needs a contract that needs uh, promises made that needs expectations set and um, getting on to consistent calls to review those expectations and making sure it is truly reciprocal. Uh, don't if you're a tech company, you've got a G2 crowd leader product, don't just assume your product is going to be everything that that agency needs and and they're going to stick with you just because you're you you won the leaderboard last fall on G2 or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think from the from the prospect and the customer side, right, in these upmarket deals, it's a unified experience. So if you're partnering with someone, it's presented as a joint solution even though of course right. everyone knows legally you're separate entities, they're going to be unhappy with you as well if the process breaks down. If, if people are ghosting, right? If they can't, if they're getting a, a terrible demo. Um, so when you partner in that way, in, in that active way, to your point, versus being an affiliate link where someone just requests a demo, you're kind of co-presenting, co co-branding to, to the customer. And so that's why that alignment is, is so key. Yeah, yeah. I'd say pick out your partners very well specific to the market. So this category leader globally for something may just not have a strong enough presence in Latin America. You may want to go into Latin America. So find your agencies on the ground there, find your tech solutions that have a big presence there, figure out if there's maybe some other direction there that could be a little bit more attractive for that market than uh, than your current tech partner. You can have multiple. But let's talk uh, towards the agencies real quick. We're going to end here. Uh, but I want both of you to comment, maybe Barrett first, since Kelly just went, your advice to agencies wanting to work with more partners and deepen their current partnerships in the HubSpot ecosystem. What would you do if you were an up and coming agency in the HubSpot partner program to find and deepen partnerships? Kelly, you soapboxing or am I soapboxing? You go first and then uh, Kelly will you can soap first. I'll soap second. <laughs> <laughs> you rinse. I'll soap you rinse. Um, here's the thing. I think the there's a couple of things that are important, right? So first is being very clear on your why. Like I know that maybe sounds simple, but I when you look at the the partnership opportunities within the ecosystem itself, transparency is sort of number one, certainly. But your why? Why am I doing this? Why am I saying yes to this? Like I, I can tell you, I've talked to agencies in my time at HubSpot for years and they'd all say like, I've got, you know, 10 different eight things that I'm a part of, that I'm a partner of, right? And you're like, feels disconnected and feels disingenuous and there's a lack of focus. Like, What if you did two things really well this year and set your sights on that? And the second thing for me is to look at the customer. Like I, I fully believe, I believe this at HubSpot, I believe it here at Newbreed, I will believe this probably for most of my career. Like the customer needs to be the nucleus of everything you do. If your decisions aren't centered around how that customer 
gets more value, stays around longer. Like it, yes, it's about us. We make more money that way, or we keep our doors and lights on longer, whatever, that's fine. But I think at its core, the customer is happier. And we know this to be true. They're going to go to the market and say, this business is great. And it's going to help you regardless. So irrespective of your, your value prop, if you will, to the market in terms of why a partnership makes sense. If you want to deepen or look for more or increase that dynamic in your business, make it about your gaps in your customer interaction. What are the things that other businesses are doing to enhance their experience, whether it's technology, additional services, whatever that is, and be open to it. And then have those discussions and choose the one that is the best time to value today and do that first. Do it really, really well. And then when you've nailed that motion, then take on your next one and continue to expand. Okay. Rinse us, Kelly. I'm ready. <laughs> All right. I, I'll just say, I think right now it's a huge competitive advantage in the HubSpot ecosystem if you can do partnerships really well and deeply. So let's flag that. And then I would say, spend more time in the research phase than you think, which I think ties into what Barrett was saying is make yeah. sure you're looking at this strategically. Don't rush just to sign a contract that often doesn't go anywhere, right? Really look at your own business and look at where you're looking for help. Are you looking for top of the funnel leads? Are you looking for co-selling? Are you looking for customer support and services or service expansion? And make sure you have that framework dialed before you sign the line on the partnerships, because that's where you're going to get the outcomes that you're looking for. I love it. I love it. We've got a whole bunch of resources on how to partner and all that stuff in the community and in the blog and all that stuff. And Kelly, we also have um, your ebook, I think, um, on how to partner, how agencies can get uh, I don't know if it's yours specifically, but HubSpots. Uh, that's mm -hmm. totally a good resource. I haven't read it, but um, Rob Sale post it in the links, but I'm going to get that to everybody in the subsequent course and everything. So we're going to have a bunch of resources on strategy of partnerships, strategy, go to market. That's what this session was obviously introdu introducing you to some great partners that we've vetted and are really willing to work with you. And then a bunch of free software, uh, Barrett King, Kelly, uh, any final thoughts, anything you want to add? Otherwise we're out of time and we'll let you guys go. Thank you for having us. Love that you do these partner tracks, bring everybody together. That's that plus doing. one. I just I love this stuff. Great conversation, great questions. Appreciate the uh, the chance to have a, a dialogue like this. For those of you still listening and engaged, add me on LinkedIn. I'm always happy to chat about this stuff. I love it. Yeah, tell Pete we say uh, hi and hopefully everything's good with him. Um, but yeah. uh, we'll do this again next year, guys. Thanks again. Hope everyone enjoyed it. Thanks, Barrett. Thanks, Kelly, for taking the time. This was awesome. Take Thanks care, everyone. Bye.